All right, YouTube. So, I'm gonna do a video on changing out a capacitor. This is the other fast weed cycle. This is the one that had the good capacitor. It's nothing hard to do. Um, these are actually pretty easy fans to work on, honestly. Especially for just a capacitor change out. Well, you're not gonna grip, are you? Uh, let's see, do I have a better flat? I really don't. I jab myself on camera. Let's see. All right, there we go. Canopy's up there. So, uh, the capacitor is actually on the side of the motor down here. And it's really easy to actually get to these. What you'll want to do is unscrew these four nuts on top. You know, be careful because these nuts on the bottom of them, there are spacers for the motor housing because the housing doesn't sit directly on top of the motor. And you really just need to kind of loosen them by hand. They should, for the most part, come off. Of course, you call me a liar right now because that one's being a little stubborn. There it is. Come on. My plan is I'm going to change this capacitor. Like I said, just because I don't really like the oil filled capacitors, um, all the fans I have, they have the oil filled capacitor, including my pedestal fans, I have for the most part changed them out. So there are the three, the four nuts are, and then you have a tag, which is the fast compute cycler tag. Sh should just come right off, there it goes. There's the tag in case any of you are curious about it. Kind of put that on your bench. Now, kind of want to pull up. And these are the spacers. I'm going to pull all them off just so I don't move them. It looks like I lost a washer somewhere in there. It'll hopefully fall out through there. There's all the parts that are spacers. What you'll usually have is you'll have a long tube, a short tube, and a washer that sits on the top of that between that and the housing. So, pretty important pieces. pieces. I can already see our capacitor. I'm not just seeing if I see where that washer went. There you are. There's that washer. And what I usually do for these is I will put them on the side. And that comes off. And a lot of the stuff is just kind of pressure fit in there. What the hell? Well, that's interesting. That's like a piece of twine or something. That's You never know what you're going to find inside these things. Alright, so the capacitor turn this so you can see that. Yeah. Capacitor is obviously right there. Like I said, these are old oil filled capacitor and the six microfarad. Uh, what I will usually do is I'll remove one of the screws to pull off the strap. You take that out. Piece of rubber that's protective from shorts. Just pull that up. And then these, a little tab you pull off. And there's the capacitor. Like I said, this one's technically still good, but I'm changing it out just because I don't trust it. So you no longer need the protective rubber cover. So that can go with the capacitor over there. And then I cut these clips off because I don't use oil based capacitors. I use the other style. So I'll cut that off and then I will strip out my leads. Uh, capacitors, it does not matter which lead you have to which wire. As long as one goes to one, one goes to the other. There we go. And while you're in here, just take a visual look at the motor. 
make sure there's no issues. This is also a good view for you guys. I don't know if you can see or not. Because the screen is blacking out. I'm going to see if I can get you a view. There's how big that motor is. Thermally protected. 1.5 amps right there on the side of the motor. I don't know if you can really see that. But I mean, to give you an idea, like here's the capacitor compared to that motor. It's... It's a big motor. <laughs> Alright, uh, let me plug this back in. Like I said, I haven't used this GoPro in a long time, so I'm trying to charge the batteries and do this at the same time. My main reason for coming out here actually wasn't even doing this. I have a Hunter Original that has sold. Someone bought a 36 inch motor I have to pack up. But since the capacitors from China arrived, I figured I would change these out. Um, ideally, it'd be best to use crimps. I don't really care that much as long as I get a good enough connection of wire nuts. Um, it's fine. You don't really twist them. Now your new capacitors, they're going to be dead when you, uh, you know, when you receive them. If you're taking apart a fan that has a live capacitor, you never want to touch the wires together. Um, it can discharge and it's very painful sometimes depending on how many microfarads and the voltage. Um, you can discharge it to make it safer, but honestly, if it's been in a fan, I usually give it a couple minutes just to let it discharge because it will discharge on its own. Alright, so. So you got a pretty good connection. I just double check my connection. And then what I've been doing on these. Well, first let's put the screw back in. And I appreciate any kind of input if you guys want more of this kind of stuff because I do work on kind of a bit and I still have a bunch of projects I need to actually work on. I'm, just, I'm always busy doing stuff and whatnot. So there that is. And then usually what I do is I get some zip ties and I'll just zip tie this capacitor right here. Um, just for safety issues. Some of you will get those actually. Those I That's the one thing I didn't grab for this video. <laughs> Uh, do I have any over here? Does not look like it. Alright, give me one second. Let's go grab... And yes, the other Fasco is still running up above us right now. Uh, like I said, since I figured it hasn't had much runtime because of the back failed capacitor, I'll let it run a little bit. So when I zip tie these, I do kind of like a little X. And I try to not pinch the wires just because that's not ideal. there. Just want to go more top. There we go. And these zip ties are pretty resilient to any kind of heat, especially the heat this motor's not put off. Shouldn't, shouldn't be enough, especially since the actual capacitor is actually being held off the motor. And then I just let the wires kind of just chill down below it like so so get you a little bit of a better view let's see so there's the capacitor two wires so now we put the whole thing back together which is pretty straightforward don't leave you guys here this time all right so that. Now, an interesting thing about this motor, this motor has had some work done on it previously. Um, there's more of that tape stuff. I guess they must have used that to quiet the housing down or something. I don't think it matters very much because I've never seen that anywhere else. Another one. 
All right, so before we get that done, first of all, there's that crimp job. Like I said, someone's done some work on this fan at some other time besides me. Um, it's fine, I'm not gonna mess with it. And you see the capacitor over here on the side. So the next thing we're gonna do is put those spacers on. I'm actually gonna put you back over here for this, just because it is on top of the motor. All right, so as I said, you're gonna have a few shorts, four shorts, four longs, and four washers. I just do them in the order of long spacer, short spacer, washer, and all of them. That, that, that. These are really good industrials, actually. Um, not the best, I would say, made, but for what they are, they're pretty damn good. Um, and there's definitely a, a cult following. Personally, um, I'm from New Jersey, and there was an arcade that had a bunch of white ones of these. Um, so that's where my memories come from. As much I, I, don't, I don't remember seeing any brown ones, per se. So I'm just happy to have some, but I really am after some of the white ones. Put your tag back on there. Thread your nuts on. Just to make sure everything has a snug fit so you have no vibrations. Nice. You could get the nut driver. I just have my clines here, so I'm not the right size. Nut driver in the drawer. Of course, that's gone missing. And last one. There we go. And like that, you've changed a capacitor on a fast heat cycle. Like I said, pretty straightforward. Um, the only other event, that piece of advice I can give to someone on this is while you still have it on the bench, go ahead and get yourself a power strip and test it um, just to make sure there are no issues. Um, it doesn't happen, but sometimes, you know, there could be issues. It's just very safe and sorry. You don't want to have this thing all mounted and hung up, and then you go to power it on, and something's not working, or there's a loose wire somewhere. So uh, that's it I have for this video. This video, this fan will be up on the test rig next. Like I said, uh, just because I want to get both of them retested. The first one is still up there. I know you can't really see it because of the shop light, but it's there. And yeah. Thanks for watching guys, I'll have the other Fasco up in a few minutes.